It's time for another limited budget food challenge and today we're going to find out if one pound for one day is still possible at the end of September 2022. So yeah one pound for one day is food and that's going to be three different meals breakfast lunch and dinner notionally there are going to be some rules rules which I've just made up to make this challenging enough to be difficult but hopefully stretch achievable so not completely impossible. So we're going to have wild food and hedgerow foraging permitted, but not foraged fungi. I'm not going to forage mushrooms because I just think that would be like shooting fish in a barrel. The mushrooms are suddenly really good this year. I think if I allow myself to pick mushrooms, it's just going to make it a bit too easy. We will have tea and coffee included as always, because if you want videos to come out, coffee has to go in. Kitchen facilities, power, water, transport. In the shopping we'll say no reduced items, no covered ingredients and no pro rata buying. So no buying a big bag of something and then using 10 pence worth of it. I have to be able to buy my shopping within the one pound budget. No urban foraging and rummaging in bins for condiment sachets and things like that. But I did have a rummage through pockets and glove compartments of cars and I've got this assortment of condiments plus I've got two of these little sachets of soup base from Spicy Ramen. So we've got, what have we got here? We've got barbecue sauce, best before, I'm just better make sure this is still in date. 10.22, just about. Oh, this went out of date in April 22. This is curry sauce. Oh well, we'll see. Probably be all right. Probably be fine. So barbecue sauce, curry sauce, two little things of ketchup. Two little sachets of mayonnaise, one of HP sauce, and then we've got salt, pepper, and some sugar, brown sugar, I think. Yes, brown sugar. So not much, but that's all I'm gonna have. So no spices or anything allowed from the cupboard, just these flavoring ingredients. One thing I almost forgot, fat is nearly always a problem on these challenges. So just to kind of sweep that out of the way so that we can focus on different challenges. I'm going to allow myself 38 grams of mucky fat that I saved from frying some sausages the day before. So that's my fat allowance in addition to this pile of random condiments. That's the only things that's going to come out of my kitchen. The rest of it has to come from the supermarket or foraged. So let's go shopping.
So back from shopping and I did manage it. I came in at 99 pence, so I'm under budget, but that was not easy. In fact, I didn't manage to get any kind of meat or anything like that. And protein was actually quite a difficulty. In previous challenges, we've been able to use things like salmon paste and sardines were always a possibility. And even that cooking bacon for 75 pence, but that's gone up to 85 pence now. The salmon paste that used to be 27 pence at the start of when I did my first challenge has gone up to over 30 pence now. I can't remember exactly how much, but it's gone up. So yes, things have gone up. Quite a few things have gone up quite a bit. Some things are still relatively reasonable. So I tried to work within that. So here's the shopping. I've got a tin of kidney beans, 240 grams drained weight. These are cooked and that was 33 pence. I've got a 500 gram pack of spaghetti, which was 23 pence. Now this has actually always been good value. It used to be 22 pence. It's gone up a penny since the start of when I was doing these challenges. So this has only gone up a penny pack of spaghetti that is a bit of a limitation though because I've got to make three meals and, and that's the only kind of starch or staple I've got to add into it unless I can forage something a tin of garden peas in water this was 21 pence now I couldn't find the mushy peas I don't think the mushy peas have gone up as well I think the mushy peas are like 23 pence so that wouldn't have worked I've got a small onion 12 pence and I've got a girthy carrot which was 10 pence. Now you might be wondering why I always gravitate towards carrots on these challenges and it's mainly because they are one of the cheaper vegetables. So compared to potatoes or parsnips or sweet potatoes or anything else like that, you get more for your money. And they are actually quite nutritious and I like carrots. You can do quite a lot with them. They're quite versatile. So anyway, that is the shopping. That plus this plus my little pot of mucky fat plus whatever I can forage has got to make three different meals tomorrow. Anyway, just a thing that I did notice when I was shopping is there aren't so many reduced sections. Reduced items were against the rules on this challenge anyway, but Tesco doesn't have so many reduced price sections now. And I think that's because there's some legislation changed about best before dates now. And so they can actually sell things. Best before dates are our suggestion. They don't have to actually take it off the shelf when it expires. I think that's changed. That's the food haul. And tomorrow I've got to make three meals out of that. I have no idea what I'm going to do. Not really. Anyway, let's resume in the morning. So I'm thinking something in the vicinity of ramen noodles, maybe, because we've got spaghetti. I haven't got any flour or anything I can make bread or pastry or anything like that. I don't know. I've tried grinding spaghetti down to, to make a, a sort of meal before and it doesn't really work. So I'm going to cook some spaghetti and I'm going to serve it somewhat in the manner of ramen noodles, I think. So I'm going to go for about 150 grams of pasta to cook. This water is just coming up to the boil. Now for salting it, I could use the salt that I've got, but I've got two of these packets of ramen seasoning, which is mostly salt. I've only got two of these little sachets of pure salt, I think. So I'm going to use some of this for seasoning the water, probably about half of this packet. So this stuff is salt and chili. That will cook some flavor into the pasta, but that's fine. Okay, now that's up at the boil. God, the chili's really hit me. In with the pasta. Right, now while that's cooking, I'm gonna go and do a little bit of foraging in my garden. Okay, foraging in the garden. Is it really foraging if it's in my garden? Well, I'm gonna say yes it is, because I'm actually gonna be picking some of this, which is mostly chickweed. I say mostly chickweed because mixed in with this, there's petty spurge, which I've got to make sure I don't pick. But I'm going to say that's foraging because I could just walk down the road and pick this from somewhere else, as opposed to, I don't know, nasturtiums here, which I obviously don't grow wild here in the UK. So I'm not picking things I planted, like herbs. I'm picking weeds that grow naturally. So this stuff here is chickweed, and it's lovely. Uh, this stuff here <coughs> is petty spurge and it's poisonous. Quite easy to make a mistake if you're not careful. This one has a latex like sap inside of it which is caustic and toxic and just nasty. Chickweed on the other hand is delicious and nutritious. 
So all it takes is a little bit of care, just not picking bunches of things, just picking individual stems, identifying that it's chickweed before it goes in the basket. So how do I know this is chickweed and not something else? Well, the answer is just familiarity. I'm very familiar with this plant because I picked it many, many times and weeded it out of my garden many, many times. It's very easy to tell what it is when these flowers open. So we'll have a look at them a bit later in the day. When these flowers open, they're tiny little starry white flowers. Very, very indicative of chickweed. Petty Spurge does not have those little white flowers. And although we've got a, a mixture of Petty Spurge growing together with chickweed, it's very, very easy to tell the two apart if you just apply a little bit of care. Anyway, that I reckon is probably enough chickweed for breakfast. Let's get that back to the kitchen. Okay, I think I'm going to say that putting this Shin Ramyun soup base into boiling water and then boiling it is a bad idea. It's like the whole kitchen's... <coughs> It's like the whole kitchen's full of pepper spray at this point now. I don't know if you can hear that in my voice. <clears throat> anyway, we've got this lovely chickweed, but it is gonna need a little wash because it does tend to pick up a little bit of soil and grit. So I'm gonna put it in some cold water there and just let it sit for a little while to loosen the dirt. Then we'll give it a little swish and take it out. And I think we'll find, yeah, we can see specks of dirt already down the bottom. Now I'm curious to see what these tinned garden peas are going to be like. My memory of tinned peas from childhood <coughs> is that they will be a, not the freshest green colour in here. And I'm not going to lie to you, when I picked these up in the supermarket, I grabbed them, I thought I was grabbing a tin of mushy peas, which would have been much more versatile for making soup, I think. Mushy peas are a kind of mealy pea. Oh yeah, look at that, they're kind of army green. So, these peas are, oh, they're quite mealy actually, so they might make a decent soup. We might better make some pea soup out of this later. They taste all right. They taste like overcooked peas. Most of those are gonna go in the fridge, but we will put some of those in, no, not ramen bowl. The chickweed is now nicely washed, and because it floats a little bit, the dirt that falls off sinks to the bottom. So we've got nice clean chickweed, just giving that a shake over the sink, and I'm only gonna take top parts. I think I'll just run the knife through that and kind of shred it up so it's not stringy stalks. So nice fresh green leaves there. That's good. I think we'll have a little bit of onion and I'm going to put it in raw but only a bit. And so this onion I'm going to slice it against the grain really thin. And a bit of carrot. I'm not going to peel it because that would just be waste. It's quite a nice sound carrot. The skin's good. So I'm going to grate some of this. Reckon that's about enough. Let's put the noodle bowl together. So with probably not all of this soup base, probably only again another third of a packet and some boiling water. I'll just make it a quick broth and <clears throat> again <clears throat> and again <laughs> gosh the chili in this is really volatile the pasta which I have deliberately cooked beyond where I would normally cook it for spaghetti because I want really soft noodles here okay and there's some left which I'm going to drain because I have another use for that later some of these rather weird looking garden peas and they don't need any more cooking but they'll just warm through in the broth. Okay, and the heat of the broth will just wilt this chickweed a little bit. There we go, not remotely ramen, but that's breakfast. Let's get that to the table and give it a taste. It destroyed my presentation and the camera wasn't rolling. Anyway, breakfast is normally a bit weird on these challenge days, and this is no exception. I think at least in this case, it did look okay before I messed it all up here. And it tastes very good. It would be nicer with a bit of bacon in there or an egg or something. And this is not a high protein breakfast, but then neither are cornflakes. There's a little bit of protein in the pasta. There's a little bit of protein in the peas. The spaghetti's a bit more substantial than typical ramen noodles, but then so are udon noodles. 
Um, so it doesn't not work. I'm going to say those peas would not be quite nice if they were just on the side of a plate next to a meal. But when they're in a kind of soup like this, yeah, they're pretty good. The chickweed, really nice, deeply earthy vegetable flavour. Kind of like a more delicate version of spinach with a bit more flavour than spinach and complements the carrot really well. So the earthiness of the carrot and the chickweed are just playing off of one another and it works really well. And I'd forgotten how pungent those little shin ramen packets are. Different kind of chilies seem to hit me in different ways. Sometimes it's right at the back of the throat, sometimes it's all in the nose. This one's giving me, giving me streaming eyes and burning lips, which sounds like it ought to be horribly unpleasant, but it's not. So that was breakfast and that was pretty good. I'm happy with that. We've got loads of stuff left. We still haven't used any of that fat. We've got three quarters of a carrot. We've got three quarters of an onion, a whole tin of kidney beans, most of the tin of garden peas, most of the pasta, plus of course this cooked spaghetti, which I'm gonna save and I'm gonna let that cool down. I think I can actually blend that up and use it as an ingredient, but that's mm, gonna be experiment for lunch. As I've mentioned in many videos, uh, we've had a really dry summer this year. And after a drought, if you get a rainy autumn, we get something that I like to call second spring, which is where a lot of spring plants or things that you would normally associate with coming up in spring have a resurgence of growth. And so here we've got some very nice fresh nettles. I wouldn't normally pick nettles at this time of year, but because they've kind of had this second spring, these nettles have been tricked into thinking it's springtime and they're putting up fresh green growth, which will be perfect for eating. And nettles are really nutritious as well. So I'm gonna pick some of those and have them for my lunch. And while we're here, I mean, look at this thistle. Look at this thistle, isn't that magnificent? I don't think there's anything I can actually do with that, but that is a beautiful specimen. I remembered my gloves this time. I'm just picking like the top four or six leaves of the nettles. As I say, normally at this time of year, the nettles would be way too coarse and tough and also full of oxalates. So they wouldn't be good to eat. But these nettles have just grown up in the last week or two. I just actually noticed here's a good illustration of what I'm talking about. So this is a nettle that's been growing all year, all summer. And you can see it's all wiry and ragged but these are fresh new growth. There's an apple here on the ground, which indicates that one of these trees above us is an apple tree. And I have picked apples from this piece of woodland before, actually, this little strip of woodland here. I picked enough apples to press them and make cider one year, although most of the apple trees have been crowded out by other species now. But I think we can do better than that apple. I know somewhere where you can pick apples that will be a little bit more useful, which is outside the doctor's surgery which we'll go and have a look at in a moment. So yeah, another apple just down there. That's a, just a feral apple and one that's kind of rotten just there. So again, we're gonna be next to an apple tree. One of these trees here is an apple tree. I think it's that one there, actually. Yes. So a couple more apples on the ground here. These are just little feral apples. Well, actually that one there might be. Yeah, I mean, we could have used that. It's gonna be really sour. But, maybe if we want a little bit of acidity, it might be useful. So maybe I'll just take, that one looks nice and sound. As does that one. And these apples, if they get covered up by leaves in the autumn, they will persist here and they'll be in good condition all the way through to spring, till maybe March or possibly April, there will be apples here that are kind of edible they'll still be sour the acidity helps to preserve them through the winter that one's got a bruise on it though so that one wouldn't last i may, may not take that one but there are others in there as you can see and these being oak trees there are an abundance of acorns this year really nice plump ones as well acorns are edible after processing but it takes time and effort to leach out the tannins out of them at least in this species of oak, which is English oak. There are other oaks, like the holm oak, which have acorns that can be directly eaten as soon as they fall. 
but I don't know of any of those growing right near me. So we might have another video on processing acorns and eating them separate from this one. Just around here in the front hedgerow of the doctor's surgery, we've got an apple tree. And I've picked and eaten these apples before. I've picked and eaten them out of a hedgerow actually in February or March or something. Because again, these apples, if they fall into the hedge here and get covered up with leaves, nature will just do its thing and preserve them. And they will preserve and stay there intact until at least March, if they're sound specimens. Anyway, if they're sound apples. Anyway, I need to find a nice one I can reach. I think there's one up there I can probably get to. That wasn't so easy, but I did manage to get two fairly decent apples. That one's got a bit of bug damage. By the look of it, that one's fairly sound. So let's get that back to Atomic Shrimp HQ, see what we can do with it. Right then, so these nettles are an important little boost for the protein in today's diet because nettles contain all of the essential amino acids for human requirements. I'm gonna give these a good wash. I'm gonna blanch them in some boiling water and then we're gonna make some kind of nettle and bean burger thing. So we'll give these a good wash, just trying to rescue and remove any small animals. I'll just go and let this guy out the window. Its companions might not be quite so lucky. It may get washed down the drain. But anyway, this is the part where somebody always tells me, oh my gosh, you ate an insect. Yeah, it's probably quite likely. I think on one video, there was a green caterpillar in my nettles and I didn't spot it and so I had nettle and green caterpillar soup and it was delicious. Give those a nice rinse, really we're just trying to rinse any grit off them but there shouldn't be very much because we picked them from the tops of the plants and it's not like there's been dust blowing about when these have been growing. So anyway, nice thorough rinse like that. Now boiling water just from the kettle just going to run that over them, really just to wilt them, and that also kills the stings. So now, as long as I get them all, that will just destroy the stinging capability of the nettles and make them a little bit more benign to handle. They're not cooked by any means, but they are blanched, which will make them just a little bit easier to handle. Gosh, that's really packed down, hasn't it? They smell great. They smell kind of a little bit like seaweed, a little bit like ginger. And this is where we're going to get a little bit experimental because the only thing I've got to bind these burgers is starchy pasta that I set aside this morning. So my theory is that I can blend this up and make a kind of starchy paste that will hold the other components of the burger things together. So we're going to go for, actually not too much to start with, we can always add more. So about, a, I don't know, a handful of that pasta. And what we've got looks a little bit like couscous, which it should because that's kind of what couscous is, is tiny pasta. Well, I don't know if you could see that, there was almost like a ball of dough rolling around in there, which is a good sign. Now the nettles, which I've squeezed most of the water out of, and also at this point I'm just going to put the last little bit of that Shin Ramen stock soup base in there. Mm, quite a bit of that, that's going to be spicy. We will have a little bit of black pepper, so two little sachets of black pepper. We probably don't need to add salt because there's salt in that stock powder. I'm going to add a little wedge of onion, so probably about that much. What's that, like 10, 15 grams, something like that. And now I want to put some beans in there. And I reckon it's probably going to take about half of this tin of red kidney beans. I'm expecting to find that there's quite a lot of water in here because this was a cheap can of beans. It's quite well filled, actually. I'm going to drain those and tip the water away. I know you can do things with aquafaba. I'm not doing that today. And 
not all of my beans. So I'm going to put some in there and blend them fine, and then some, and I'll just pulse it. So the other approximately quarter of a can of beans. Now we've just got to see what we can do with this bean and pasta and nettle mixture. It's quite doughy, so I think it will hold together, but I think it will need a little bit of a chill. I'm going to divide that into two. And then just gently form it into kind of a patty. Now fortunately we do have fat for cooking this today, so that's a bonus. I'm just going to place these, just going to give them a really good squeeze so it's all nice and coherent and place it on a piece of reusable baking liner. So those are going to go uncovered in the fridge so they will dry out a little bit and in an hour or so we'll cook them for lunch. Before I wash up the blender I'm going to strain these peas and blend them up because I'm going to make pea soup and I might as well just blend them now while the blender has already been used. Blended peas, those will go back in the box and we'll make some pea soup as a starter for lunch. So fortunately even though these peas were sold as garden peas they are actually quite mealy and starchy but that's ideal for soup. Most of my mucky fat, I think probably about two thirds of it, is going to go into this pan. I'm going to just put the spoon in there so that warms up and the fat melts off of it so I don't waste any. And these burger things have firmed up a little bit so that's good. And I'm just going to turn that down so they're gently sizzling in there. Meanwhile over here, since we've got the frying pan going, I'm just going to cut a couple of nice, well a few slices of this carrot and I'm going to drop them in the frying pan and just see if I can get them to crisp up a little bit. I've got these peas, this is the tinned peas, not my favourite ingredient, kind of regret buying these but we are where we are. That's going to go into a soup of some sort and I think I'm going to help it along with this curry sauce, this sweet curry sauce. So it'll end up being a very mild, kind of dull almost. These bean burger things are cooking a little bit quicker than I hoped actually, so I'm going to turn this down so they don't burn. I think we'll have most of that pea stuff in there. Maybe save a little bit in case we can think of something else to do with it later. The curry sauce. Now this curry sauce is out of date. But I don't think that's going to be a problem. It looks fine. It smells like it should. It kind of looks like it should. I am assuming that's fine. So a little splash of water in there just to loosen that up. I also think this is the place for the HP sauce because HP sauce is basically tomato ketchup with tamarind. So I think tamarind and allspice and things like that will go with what we're making here. It might make it a weird colour, but I think the flavour will work. I think that's not necessarily a weirder colour than it was. And chickweed, remember I mentioned those little starry white flowers? Well, there they are. And for this soup, I'm going to chop the chickweed quite small. Lose the stalk ends. I'll just go through that one more time with the knife. Okay, in with that chickweed. I'm just going to cook that for a moment just to let that wilt down. Just the heat of this mixture will wilt that down. And I've just got some caramelised carrot slices to go on top there. Okay, doesn't look great I don't think but let's go and give it a taste. I didn't season this when I was cooking, so it's going to have a little bit of extra salt. Let's give it a try. I'll put a bit of pepper on there as well, by the way. Chickweed does give it an unusual texture, but it's nice. Got to say, those two sauces we put in, the HP sauce and the curry sauce, have made it quite sweet. But it tastes nice. And actually, I think the peas did need something. The flavour of the peas as they came out the can was not great. It does need a bit more pepper. Most things do. 
I'm going to say that doesn't look great. I don't think it does, but pea soup never does anyway. Hmm. That's all right. That was, of course, just the starter, and we need to make the main course, although it's going to be kind of another lightish course. And I'm going to use the apple that we got from the doctor's surgery, plus some of my carrot. So I'm going to grate some of this carrot. We'll save that bit for dinner. Now, this apple is just a... This is like a crab apple species that happens to produce big fruits. The tree is an ornamental for its flowers rather than its fruit. So I think I know what to expect here. The skin's going to be tough. The fruit is going to be sour. Mm -hmm. My gosh, that's tart. Wow. I'm going to lose the skin. It's almost like a cooking apple. Actually, it's like a Bramley. The skin, it's just not worth having. Probably could do something with those. Probably make apple tea or something. Or if we had some bones, we could make bone apple tea. That's what that is, right? You can tell this is a really acidic apple because it's not browning on exposure to air. The acid in the apple is providing the resistance to browning that you would normally get by adding lemon juice. I'm going to cut that into little matchstick slices. Now, I don't think it will hurt to have a little bit of sugar in this because those apples are super sour. And I think the mayonnaise. What would be really good here would be some mustard, but we don't have mustard. So just kind of lightly dress those in that little bit of mayonnaise. So the nettle and bean burgers with an apple and carrot salad. Let's get that to the table, give it a taste. Okay, well, the texture of these patty things is a lot softer than I kind of thought it might go, but there's nothing in there really to firm up as it cooks. Eva, would you be quiet? Anyway, let's give them a taste. So they're quite soft. They're really tasty. Mmm. Nettles and beans, definitely a good combo. I think we might have to revisit this one, even though there's nothing really wrong with the flavour here. We might have to revisit this and do a recipe redemption where we do it with something else to kind of help bring it all together. Maybe some oats. That tastes really good, and the nettles are part of the reason for that. And the apple and carrot salad, it definitely needed the sugar because these apple pieces are really, really tart. But it's nice because that brown sugar hasn't completely dissolved into it. So you've got a kind of crunchy brown sugar thing going on, which is adding sweetness, and then a crispy apple thing, which is adding sourness. I'm not really sure these two things go together, though. It's not not nice. Not really a combination that I would say is notable. Not lying there, these things taste really good. I suppose the fact that they were fried in sausage grease might help a little bit as well. So actually these two things on the plate are more of a contrast than they are a combination. So you've got the nettle and bean patty, which is slightly spicy from that soup base powder we put in there. Deeply savoury. The apple and carrot salad is really light and refreshing. So in that sense, they do work together, just alternately rather than together. Anyway, camera off now, I'm going to finish this. I very nearly neglected to mention that there is no trace of the pasta that's in here. So the pasta's completely combined in. There's no conspicuous pieces of spaghetti in there. So that did work. Although because the starches were already cooked when they went in there, it hasn't really bound it together. However, that was quite a pleasant and satisfying meal. Using the remaining ingredients, I've got to try and make a pasta sauce. And I've peeled that little bit of carrot mainly for visual aesthetics more than anything else just because it does tend to look a little bit dull when it's got the peel left on. I'm going to cut this fairly small so we'll go for not quite tiny dice not quite julienne. Fortunately we have most of the onion left I'm going to, have to just cut that into slivers so most of it I'm just going to cut into little crescents and some of it I will dice a bit smaller. Bit of an awkward shape for cutting because of the pieces I cut off earlier. That's the rest of the fat. I'm just going to chuck that in the microwave for a second just to get all of it out. All right, so that's all of it. And we also got a little bit of kind of browned juices, which will add a bit of flavor. So carrot and onion in. I've got an awful lot left to work with here. So I'm just making the most of what I can out of this lot here. I was thinking about putting those the remainder of the peas in there, but I think it's just going to make it unpleasant to look at. So I think we'll keep this simple. 
And we will have a little bit of salt in there just to help those along. The remaining kidney beans, again, I think I'm going to have about half of them, so about a quarter of the total can, which I'll mash up, and hopefully they will contribute to the sauce a little bit, and the rest of them will go in whole. It's getting a bit dark now, so I've had to put the kitchen lights on. Everything's going to look a little bit unnatural from here on in because of the lighting we have here in the kitchen. Right, the rest of those beans can go in now. And you can hate me for this if you want, but the only tomato I've got is these two sachets of tomato ketchup. Really not very much of it. It's like two teaspoons full of ketchup there. And yeah, I know, ketchup doesn't make a pasta sauce but it's what I've got. I've also got this barbecue sauce which is going to go in there as well because again it's what I've got and this is just really ketchup with a bit of smoky flavour and probably a bit more sugar. Just going to cook that gently to hopefully drive off some of the acidity, some of the vinegar from the sauce and I think with the acidity of that tomato ketchup it's probably going to need a little bit of sugar in there. Should I taste this now or should I leave it to be a complete surprise. Well, we'll give it a taste. It tastes okay, but it's nothing like I would normally expect from a pasta sauce. Water's at boil now, so the salt goes in, the very last one. And I'm just going to do 100 grams of pasta. I think that's probably enough. Okay, that pasta's done. Still got a little bit of a bite to it, which is what I want. I'm going to put that straight in there. I'm not going to drain it completely either because I probably need a little bit of liquid just to loosen up that sauce. You can always add some more from the pan if need be. I'm just going to stir that round because I really want that to pick up anything that was stuck on the pan in order to coat the pasta. Well, not Moroccan pasta. Let's get that to the table and give it a taste. Okay, you can probably hear rain in the background. This is what we've got left. So, I taste it as it is first. I haven't got any more salt to put on there. I have got some, I've got three little sachets of black pepper left. I have a feeling we're going to need it. Mm. I think maybe that sugar was a bad idea. I thought the ketchup was going to be sufficiently acidic to need balancing with sugar, but what we've got here actually tastes quite sweet. Let's try it with a bit of pepper on there. I'm guessing we must have driven off some of the acetic acid from the vinegar. It's lacking something and what it's lacking is tomato. All I've got left to season it is this other packet of Shin Ramen stock powder. Probably just going to put a little bit on some of it here and see what that's like because it's easier to add than it is to subtract. Well, that is weird, but it does work. So, some more of that on that. That really actually seems to accentuate the smokiness of the barbecue sauce that was in there. Well, I think the best way to sum this up is weird, but not terrible. It's definitely lacking something. Garlic would be great. Mushrooms would have been great. Obviously, tomatoes would have been really nice. It's just missing all of those things. And when I say missing, I mean in both senses of the word. They're not there, and this dish is yearning for them. Right, let's just go and have a look in the kitchen, see what ingredients we've got left, and then we'll have a little wrap up and score these meals. Remaining at the end of the day, we've got 257 grams, minus a couple of grams for the packaging. 257 grams, so about half of the pasta uncooked. Plus, I've got still got some pasta that I cooked earlier and didn't use. I've got a couple of tablespoons full of the pea mixture, which I just couldn't bring myself to add to that recipe. I think it would have just made the sauce look really unappetizing. It might well have added some. It might well have added some protein to it. I think it might have just damaged the flavor even more. I've got nearly a whole packet of Shin Ramen stock powder. I've got those two apples. They won't go to waste. I'll make an apple pie at some point. And I've got three little sachets of brown sugar, probably three half teaspoons, so a teaspoon and a half of brown sugar. 
that's it. That's all I've got left at the end of the day. So that was pretty tight, apart from energy. I think the pasta covers that. But I think we'll need to score these dishes. So as I'm sitting down to edit the video that you're now watching, I think we'll just assign some scores to those different dishes and then talk about the challenge in general at this point in time. So the breakfast, the kind of noodle bowl, I think that's possibly one of the nicer breakfasts I've had on this series, but that's mainly because the breakfasts are usually a bit weird and mismatched ingredients. It could have done with a boiled egg in it. It could have done with a bit of bacon on there or something else. It was just missing maybe one extra thing to make that really enjoyable. I'm going to give that six out of 10 because it was okay. The lunch starter pea soup, a little bit on the sweet side, but actually quite enjoyable and probably really the only way that those tin peas can be truly enjoyed is in a soup. So again, I'm going to give that six out of 10, I think. Lunch main course, apple and carrot salad. There was absolutely nothing wrong with that salad. That was really nice. Apple and carrot and mayonnaise, can't really go wrong with that. The bean and nettle patties tasted amazing. They tasted really, really good. A little bit disappointing on texture. They were very, very soft texture, almost like potato cakes, but they were okay. I think all in all, I'm gonna give that meal another six out of 10. I think there's room for improvement there. Some walnuts in that apple and carrot salad would be fantastic. And probably just a handful of oats in those nettle and bean patties would give them the right firmness to make them a bit more enjoyable. And maybe one other item on the plate there would have rounded that out. And finally, the pasta, again, conspicuous by what was lacking. It really needed something else in that sauce. It needed tomatoes or garlic or mushrooms or meat or something in that sauce. It was just a little bit lackluster, a little bit low on flavor, just a tiny bit uninteresting, not very saucy. It was not awful though. So I think this one's probably gonna get five out of 10. So a bit of a kind of level middle of the road score for this whole set of things. But I think that's probably a reflection of the limitations of the shopping. The prices have gone up. It's now a lot harder to try to balance those factors of sustenance, variety, nutrition, and flavor. You kind of have to compromise on one of those factors in order to pay attention to the others. So if you go for variety, you may end up neglecting nutrition or sustenance. If you make sure you've got enough sustenance, you lose the capacity for variety and perhaps you lose a little bit of the element of deep flavors. Anyway, so it is still possible to do a one pound for one day challenge. I'm not hungry at the end of this day. I wouldn't say I'm completely satisfied with what I've eaten today, as the scores will no doubt have told you. It is still possible. Do I recommend it? Of course not. But it's been an interesting exercise and it was interesting to see how the prices have gone up since that first challenge I did. And actually those price rises haven't happened gradually over that period of several years. They've happened quite sharply in the last few months. So yeah, it's still possible. It's a lot more difficult. If I'd allowed myself to forage mushrooms, of course it would have been a lot easier, but then this would have been a mushroom foraging video, not a budget challenge. Anyway, I hope that was interesting. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.